Finally, there's the third and most comforting lie that anti-Zionism, the wish for the destruction or non-presence of the state of Israel. Zionism usually has more attached to it than just the desire for the existence of Israel. There's usually a number of things attached to it. It's usually attached to the notion that you support the government of Israel and everything that it does. So generally, if someone is anti-Zionist, they're against the government of Israel. Has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. If there's a black-owned business, but I don't like their business practices, I should be able to speak against that business without being considered racist. That lie is currently being encouraged by the equation of anti-Semitism with Islamophobia. This is happening all over the place. Again, not liking the actions of a country is not the equivalent of hating the people that live under its governance. The anti-Semitism we see today on college campuses is part and parcel of the anti-Semitism that ended with the slaughter of 1,500 Jews in the Gaza envelope. You can say that, but it doesn't make it true. Hatred of Jews is the driving force behind hatred of Israel. It can be, yes. But it doesn't make it necessarily true all the time. But in order to restore any semblance of moral cover for hating Israel, you have to separate anti-Semitism from anti-Zionism. Yes, because they're different things. This allows you to hate Jews while pretending to just hate Israel. The easiest way to accomplish this is to downplay the obvious reflection between international Jew hatred and attacks on Israel, and instead to subsume anti-Semitism under a broader, different rubric of lack of multicultural tolerance. Well, I mean, it is kind of interesting how Israel pushes for every other country to be as multicultural as possible. But in their own country, you want the biggest walls, the biggest restrictions, the biggest all of this stuff that other countries are wanting. But uh, Israel claims is uh, is against multiculturalism. Well, I, I don't know how that's supposed to work, man. Now, this is a lie and it's an obvious lie. Of course, there are occasional acts of targeting of Muslims, and they are nothing like the targeting of Jews. These are not the same category. They do not follow the same logic. They're not the same perpetrators. They do not occur anywhere near as frequently. They are not spurred by the sort of cycle of violence in the Middle East talk that you keep hearing about. All of these comforting lies are useful in allowing the morally idiotic to attempt to regain a moral high ground via a falsely restored moral equivalence. And how eager they are for that moral equivalence, how badly they want it, how deeply they seek it. How many people are itching for some terrible thing to happen in the war so they can blame Israel and then go right back to Israel and its opponents, they're just the same. Sorry, man, this does not prove that being against Israel is the same thing as being against Jewish people. It's, it's false, man. A site gets bombed by Israel that is a Hamas site and some of the shrapnel hits the wall of a church and some people get killed and it's Israel was targeting a church. People are looking for the off ramp. Look, I'll agree that people are making false equivalences as far as that goes. They're trying to say that the ways that Israel looks at collateral damage is the same as the way that Hamas looks at collateral damage. They're obviously very different, okay? Hamas pushes forth the notion that they care more about death than the rest of the world cares about life, right? I mean, they've said this, right? So there's, there's, there's some bad things about them. That doesn't mean that cutting off power and fuel and water and food and the internet and telling people they, they must go to a different part of Gaza or they're going to get killed. It, it, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't make that nice, man. That doesn't make that a good move on behalf of Israel. Now, Israel is in a probably untenable situation, you know, but that doesn't mean that uh, Israel is innocent of doing bad things when they react poorly to bad situations. This moral equivalence allows, for example, leftist Jews to pretend they won't be lumped in with their fellow Jews by the intersectional coalition. It allows the intersectional to pretend that they are on the side of the righteous, even as they make excuses for Hamas. It allows the international community to continue to pressure Israel after the biggest mass murder of Jews since, again, the Holocaust. Nobody is saying that these, well, I, very few people are saying that what happened in Israel, the slaughter of so many people, the, the just just the, the horrible carnage and terrible things that were done to them. OK, nobody was saying that those things again, very few people were saying that those things were good things. OK, that does not mean that Israel gets to do anything it wants as a retaliation. Never again doesn't apply, after all, if the Jews in the end are part of the problem. And so 
After approximately one week of global dyspepsia with the evil of Hamas, the world is gradually returning to its steady diet of moral equivalence. They're doing so with eagerness. This is why the New York Times was so excited to run with the false story of an Israeli airstrike on a hospital believing a genocidal terror group from the jump. Ben, you're correct that media has an anti-Israel bias. Mainstream media, well, except for Fox, has an anti-Israel bias. That doesn't mean they're anti-Semitic. Okay. Now, are they foolish sometimes for the things that they support? Yes. But that doesn't mean they're anti-Semitic. Sorry, Ben. 